I saw this last night. <laughs> yeah, Hillary Clinton is right. And, you know, um, she's went through the mill and had her uh, private life run through the mill. There were fake scandals, so-called scandals in the 1990s with all the waste of taxpayer money investigating uh, bullshit. And it was all GOP-inspired uh because they were afraid Bill Clinton and Vice President Al Gore would destroy their uh, vaunted Southern strategy, which Nixon had employed in the late 1960s to get the Wallace vote in early 70s and to play the race card and so on and so forth. So the Republicans have a total stranglehold on the Deep South and the border states. At, you know, as well as their um, Midwest, Mountain State, and some of the, the Rust Belt. And so it was all fake shit. All of it. All of it was lies. And it was all because the Republicans were intimidated by the fact there were two Southern politicians, or border so politicians, Bill Clinton and Al Gore, Bill Clinton from Arkansas, Al Gore from Tennessee, and they posed a big threat to, to the Republican Party. And so it was anything to destabilize. They used a billionaire by the name of the late Richard Mellon Scaife, who later, after all of this happened, after the Clinton, Bill and Hillary left office, Bill Clinton left office, and he had actually met Hillary Clinton, and he started feeling guilty about it. He really, he didn't apologize to her, but he had said he really, you know, he felt guilty about everything he did. Because it was, you know, if you're if you're a politician out there, you know, you're out there, you're you're you don't know them personally. Uh, you could demonize, you could do all that, but if you meet him in person, it's quite a different thing. And he felt like shit. <laughs> so. Anyway, that was all bullshit. All of it. Water, white water, the Paula Jones crap, the Lewinsky thing, all that. It's not... With Lewinsky, it ha it happened. But it was blown out of proportion. It was... The Republicans were using that as a way to help them get, uh, get control of Congress and uh, put through a bogus impeachment. And, of course... The more they per pursued Clinton, the better in the polls he was. So it was all, it was all, but you know, it was all bullshit. So Hillary Clinton knows all about this. Plus, what really what Hillary Clinton did was she committed the unpardonable sin when she and Bill first came to Washington that they didn't kiss the ass of Sally Quinn, who was married to um, the late Ben Bradley who was the editor of, of the Washington Post, and she was this kind of this gad about. She was a journalist, and she was a good writer, but, you know, she got to where she was because she slept with her boss. You know, and later she embraced religion and all this damn shit. She's about 80 years old now. But Hillary Clinton would not kiss her ass. And that's where the media turned antagonistic against the Clintons. Because how dare, as the late David Broder said, how dare, in, in effect, how dare they soil the Beltway? It, it isn't their place. It's not their place. You know, it was all, it was all regional prejudice, even though Hillary was born in Illinois, grew up in the Midwest, but... Bill was from Arkansas, but hey, they were hillbillies, right? Despite their achievements and stuff, they were a pair of hillbillies. How dare, how dare they not kiss the ass of Sally Quinn? How dare Hillary not? So now, we all know, or should, about the thing with uh, um, Donald Trump. But she's always taken a, a dim view about this transgender shit. Her daughter, Chelsea, oh, she's off on the woke thing and all that crap. But Hillary ain't having any of it. 
And she, like James Carville, who was there, uh, involved in their campaigns, she's not afraid to say, hey, we need to stop kissing the ass of the woke crowd or the QT crowd. And, that, and I would say what she's saying here is she's telling Joe Biden to knock it off. We've got bigger fish to fry. She said, the only focus of Democrats should be winning the 2024 presidential election. And I would say not only that, but the 2022 midterms. Hillary Clinton warned that Democrats' insistence on focusing on transgender issues and spending their time condemning J.K. Rowling or Rowling could cost them the 2024 election and cost America democracy itself. See, she knows all about the GOP assault, as I mentioned in my preface. She knows all about that. She knows what's at stake. But do you think these dingbats don't know? Do you think these dingbats don't know any, any of it? Ah, there's a stupid Medicare call. I'm not answering it. Um, could be about... Oh, it could be about that. Let's see what it is. Hello? Hello? Well, they hung up on me. Hello? Well, hell with that. Just fuck you and the horse you rode in on. All right. Anyway, so she knows. And so Biden is the one. And that's really who she's aiming this at. You know, and she isn't saying he should ditch his advisors. But she says Democrats seem to be, oh, uh, no, this is Edward Luce. The Democrats are sabotaging themselves by focusing on the wrong issues. And this is what Luce said. Democrats seem to be going out of their way to lose elections by elevating activist causes, notably the transgender debate, which are relevant only to a small, mi small minority, Luce said. What sense does it make to depict J.K. Rowling as a fascist? The former first lady and 2016 presidential candidate didn't dispute Luce's assertion and answered, We are standing on the precipice of losing our democracy, and everything that everybody else cares about then goes out the window. Look, the most important thing is to win the next election. The alternative is so frightening that whatever does not help you win should not be a priority. And then, um, so she didn't say it directly. She basically agreed with what the interviewer said. Um, look, I'm all about having vigorous debate, and I think it's good, and it gives people a chance to be part of the process. She said this in December while voicing fears over Democrats' 2022 midterm prospects. But at the end of the day, it means nothing if we don't have a Congress that will get things done and we don't have a White House that we can count on to be sane and sober and stable and productive. So this is, she has gone, kind of gone on the record of taking a dim view of this stuff. Like any sane person. And so uh, she didn't exactly say it, but she agreed, agreed with the thrust of that interviewer's question. And then, of course, the big story yesterday, besides the the uh, swimming deal, the uh, FINA ruling about keeping the cheaters out of women's sports, was that Bristol um, protest or from uh, Standing for Women and other other outfits, or just regular women, just coming and voicing their views about how we should preserve women's sex-based rights. And, of course, nearby and right there were the trans activists. And somebody dubbed them the Black Pampers. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. You know, the Antifa types, you know, that were heavily masked so, nobody, so they wouldn't embarrass their parents and other relatives. And just shout, trying to shout them down and all this stuff. They were pretty intimidating. But you know, old Kelly J. Keen um, was, of course, she is a big activist, women's rights activist in, in the UK. And, you know, she just, just 
it didn't intimidate her at all. She's like five feet tall, a little over five feet tall. She's not intimidated by these great big dudes trying to say, trans women are women. Trans rights are human rights. You know, that they want, they're right. They want to have an orgasm anywhere and everywhere, no matter who the hell it is. Uh, right, who the hell's rights and safety are trampled upon. They don't give a shit. It's all about pursuing that big O. And because they're basically they're perverts. Okay? Basically, the kids are a shield. Even the women are a shield against these dudes that just want to be validated for their... Ah, they're all sexually motivated. The males. But anyway, so it was kind of kind of risky that they went there, and, and Bristol apparently is woke city in the UK. So their woke crowd is very, uh, very, very organized. And, but they had, they had their um, protests, they had their speeches, it was like a speaker's corner, and, and all that. So I would say it was pretty successful. And when you get these idiots in the background trying to shout them down, that just proves Kelly J and the rest of them's point about what these guys are. You know, two or three generations ago, these guys would have been in an insane asylum. Or they'd have been in jail. Now, they're allowed to run rampant. And thanks to porn, easy access and porn, it's gotten worse. These guys are totally damaged in the head. So... They're not interested in debate. They're interested in just shutting women up. And they're really the same as the far right in that. They want women out of the public sphere. They're just masturbation objects or little servants around the house or whatever. Or little mothers. That's all they're for. That's your career. And, you know, <laughs> so that that is, that is kind of what it is it's all pure sexism so anyway this i'm 12 minutes into this it's going to take me all day to upload but anyway uh i thought that was pretty funny about hillary although again it wasn't she agreed with it but we have bigger fish to fry in 2022 and 2024 and joe biden better knock off this goddamn shit a pandering to these weirdos but of course the reason he's pandering to him and other Democrats is in two words, Citizens United. So Citizens United is not just for right-wing billionaires, it's also for those allegedly on the left to influence, including degenerates. And they wouldn't have gotten where they are at, legally. I mean... Uh, Jennifer Billick, in her articles, doesn't really... She she talks about all this corporate stuff, but she doesn't get right to the crux of it. Well, why is that? Citizens United. That's how they've been able to capture them. So anyway, um, that is about it. That's about all I have to say today.